Hey all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, if you know my channel at all, I am a huge Melt Stan. And if you don't know my channel at all, I am a huge Melt Stan. <laughs> but I have to be honest, it's been a while since they've come out with something that's really excited me. I've skipped past a few of their recent launches because they just like kind of weren't doing it for me. They had the Earth, Air, Fire, Water palettes, and I was just kind of like, yeah, those are, those are okay. And then they had the contour stuff, and I was like, eh, it's okay. But I didn't want to buy any of it. I didn't buy the Blueprint palette. I didn't buy several of the things because they just weren't intriguing me. And then they came out with the Electrip. Each April, Melt has a tendency to do a collection that is themed towards expanding your mind, if you will, in one way or the other. Usually it is something to do with the smoking variety. This time it was to do with something a little more psychedelic. As for what I expected with this, let's talk about that first. So Melt posted this outside and it said it was electric and it was trippy and they posted some like pictures of mushrooms and things like that. So I was like, wow, okay, this is gonna be like neon colors and like something super super vibey and maybe like really metallic, almost like disco colors, like golds and oranges and neon greens, neon pink, things like that. And then, then this is what they showed. This is not what I expected at all. And I think a lot of people were the same way. And I remember when they showed the inside, I was just kind of like, I'm sorry, what? Like nothing about this really says like trippy to me at all. Nothing says trippy at all. So I was really hesitant. And then they posted some swatches and I was like, you know what, I'm listening. The swatches looked beautiful and pigmented and like melts quality. And I kind of fell down that rabbit hole where I was like, you know what, okay, I haven't been intrigued by anything in a while, but I'm intrigued by this, so I'm gonna get it. So I did, I purchased this the second it launched and it got to me fairly quickly in less than a week. What I wanna show you today are first, you know, you'll see the palette before I've gotten my grubby little fingers in it. You're gonna see swatches and you're gonna see some dupes because there is a specific palette of melts specifically that I was like, did they dupe themselves? Let's start with the actual palette though. This is a 10 shade palette and six of those are shimmers and four of them are mattes. They are just really, really beautiful. The color story really is nice. We do have this warmer side that has those reds and those peaches and those oranges. Then we have some sort of more neutral colors in the center with that gold and kind of brownish green color. And then we've got the blues and then finally that sparkly shimmery chartreuse green, which is one of my favorite colors in this entire world. It looks beautiful in the sunlight. I wanted to show you in the sunlight so you could see just those sparkles really come out to play, but the swatches are where things got a little curious. Let me also start by saying that the way I do my swatches is different than it used to be. I used to do one swipe in the pan and one swipe on my arm, but I realized when I'm doing a look on my eyeballs, I never take my brush and go one swipe in the pan, one swipe on my eyeballs. So I feel like it's not fair to do swatches that way. So now I do build it up on my arm the way I would build it up on my eyes. Now, some of these colors did not swatch the way I was expecting. Strawberry Fields, which is that red color, definitely I had to go over it a few times. And even still, it didn't look very opaque on my arm. When it came to Saturn, which is that sparkly, very, very light peachy orange, I barely saw anything at all. Nothing at all. Now keep in mind, I have no primer on my arm. I have no glitter glue on my arm, nothing like that. But still, I could very barely see the color. Reefer is one that really surprised me because usually these dark browns, these dark green browns, they are usually opaque and pigmented in that first swatch. This one definitely took a few swipes on my arm to get to full opacity. And even then, it's not that it was patchy, but it just didn't look as opaque as I wanted it to. And I feel like having a brown, a very dark brown, arguably the darkest shade in this palette, having it be not very pigmented seems a little crazy to me. Pseudo is another color that swatched a little funny on my arm. Again, it's this thing of where it's not necessarily patchy, but it's also not completely opaque and you can still see skin through it, which is something I don't expect when it comes to matte vivid pigments like this. I think that they're going to be just, you know, instantly beautiful, instantly the color that they're supposed to be. So when they're not, I'm a little hesitant. When I did build these colors up though, I really do feel like you can see this full color story and it really is stunning. It really does go well together. Those shimmers, when they catch the sunlight, 
it's like nothing else. They are just so beautiful and I was so impressed with them. So for the most part, I was impressed with the swatches on this, but there were a few that surprised me in not the greatest way. Also, I do wanna say when I washed these swatches off of my arm, they all washed off very easily, except one color. Pseudo, which is that dark teal blue, definitely stained my arm a bit. And you can probably, I don't know if you can see, it still stains my finger a little bit, even though I've washed my hands several times. Blues usually don't stain me at all. You can probably guess that I did use it on this eye and we're gonna go through a tutorial of that, but I'm curious to see if this stains me later on. Now, as far as dupes, when I saw this palette online, no dupes really came to mind. But as soon as I got it in person, I was just kind of like, wait a second. And I went and grabbed my Vita palette. So this is from the Amor Eterno collection. And all of a sudden I was kind of like, are these similar? So on the top we have Amor Eterno and on the bottom we have Electrip. And even though the color stories are backwards from each other, I saw some similarities in here. So I did want to show you swatches of these two palettes with each other, just the shades that I thought were similar. So on the top, you can see the new Electric palette and on the bottom, you can see the Vita palette. The first two shades I swatched were Strawberry Fields from Electric and Mexicana from Vita. And I do think that these colors are more different than I expected. Strawberry Fields definitely has a bit of a more pink undertone to it, where it's almost like a cherry red, whereas Mexicana is just that beautiful, deep, deep red. Mexicana was also definitely more pigmented and opaque than Strawberry Fields. I also wanted to swatch the oranges compared to each other. And again, you can see here, they are definitely similar. They have a similar vibe, but they're not the same. And all of these colors did swatch beautifully. I had no issues with one being more sparkly than the other, one being more opaque than the other. These all swatched very nicely. When it came to Reefer from the Electric palette versus Chocolate, these again, they're different colors because Reefer has a bit more of a green undertone, whereas Chocolate is that true chocolatey color. But again, similar to the reds in this palette, the chocolate color from Vita definitely swatched more opaque, more instantly pigmented than Reefer, which I had to build up. So again, I'm seeing this pattern with the Electric palette where you do have to build these colors up to get full opacity. And finally, I swatched Serape from the Vita palette versus Magic Mush from Electric. That one is on the top. And these colors are, are very, very different. They both have a similar sparkle level, but you know, Magic Mush is definitely that chartreuse, that lime color, whereas Serape is a grass green. So I am glad that I swatched these next to each other because again, when I first saw it, I was like, holy crap, did I just buy the same exact palette twice? And I do feel personally like these are different enough where I am happy to have them both in my collection and I don't think that they are dupes for each other. Now let's get into the tutorial. Again, I wanted to try two different looks on two different eyes so that you can see. I definitely have some thoughts as to how these applied. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end. There are some thoughts as I was applying this, but let's get into it. Hello, I am barefaced completely. The only thing that I have on right now is the Kaleidos Tone Activator Eye Primer. And I just kind of patted that in. I wanna do two separate looks with the electric palette. As of right now, I have not put this on my face yet, so I am very excited to try this out. I know I want to do one look that is kind of on this side, and then the other eye look will be kind of on this side. So there are a few colors I'm really interested in trying out. I think with this, I wanna stick with these middle colors, and I might deepen it up with this color on the end, but I wanna have a very orange look. I'm really curious to try those orange sparkles. And on this side, I feel like, I know that this would be the thing that I would immediately go for. So I feel like I need to stay in these blues over here, but we are not gonna be able to try on every single color on my eyeballs today, but we're gonna do a bunch. So for this eye, that's where I'm going to be doing these warmer colors. And I feel like I wanna start with the deepest color I'm gonna use, which is Strawberry Fields. This is red, 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 okay? And I'm going to be putting this just on the outer corner. This is where I want the color to be the deepest. So I'm packing that on. This color is pretty, but I feel like it's not as opaque as I want it to be. And right now, like I said, I'm just packing it on. And in the center here, it's just not showing up, like I said, as opaque as I want it to be. It's not like patchy at all. It just, 
like you can see through it a little bit and maybe that's the point it is a pretty color though i do love the actual color of it by the way i'm using my singe beauty eo2 for that and i'm cleaning it off because this brush has become an instant favorite so i know i've been using it a lot but i'm just gonna kind of diffuse this edge just a little bit kind of no surprise that it blended out easily there because while it is pigmented it does fade out a little bit at the same time but again that's not necessarily a bad thing but it is something that i want to point out i do like though that it faded nicely once i started blending it okay with the singe eo3 i'm going into i believe it's pronounced bang it's b-h-a-n-g i always feel like such a square if you will whenever these palettes come out like the 420 palette because there'll be these names and i'll be like what's Santa Maria and everyone's like it's a strain of weed you moron and these are probably all strains of, well reefer is not a strain of hallucinogenic drug but is bang or is bang also close to the reefer <laughs> anyway I'm gonna take bang and this is gonna go in my crease and I'm actually gonna take this color up pretty high so one thing that's nice I will say I don't have any fallout but look strawberry fields like it's still there, but it's not there. I want this to actually be red. <laughs> All right, we can go back in and touch that up more later. What I'm going to do right now though, I am going to take my NYX Glitter Primer and I wanna put that all over the lid because the other two shades that I'm going to be using are shimmers. I feel like I wanna try these with a fluffier brush. So this is the BK Beauty 203. It's a very nice just eye brush in general. I'm going into Head Trip, which is a really, really pretty sparkly orange. And I'm going to put that all over the lid. That's a pretty color. Wow. Oh, I like that color. That performed beautifully. That color. Ooh. That's kind of like the perfect orange juice color. I'm going to go ahead and deepen this up again. That color I really, really, really like. Okay, I really like that color. With a pencil brush, I'm going into Saturn and I want to pop that on the inner corner. This looks like it's barely there and this color did not swatch great, so I'm curious. Maybe I will put down some glitter primer first. It is barely visible and I am packing this on. It just kind of looks like glitter. I don't know if you can see, I think you can see it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of just unimpressed with that color. I'm unimpressed overall with that color. Um, that's a bummer. Yeah, that's a real bummer. Maybe if I put it on the brow bone, would it look cute? Well, then it just looks like a glitter bomb, but whatever, we're gonna run with it. That's actually not too bad. That's actually kind of cute when it catches the light. All right, I'm gonna be doing eyeliner and I'm going to go under the eyes, but for that, I wanna make sure that I have my foundation on first. So we're actually gonna move over to the other side at this point where I am going to be doing these blues. Now I will say, I mentioned this, I hope I mentioned this in when I was showing the swatches, this color pseudo is the only color that sort of stained my skin. So I'm a little nervous about it, but I do want to go the same route that I went with the other eye. I am cleaning off. I'm telling you that Sig or the Singe Beauty EO2, love it. So I'm gonna go into pseudo, kind of gently because this color does have some fallout. Yep, a significant amount. And just like the other side, this one's getting packed on the outer corner. This color is much more intense than, I, I know it's hard to compare a blue to a red, but I just, in intensity, this one is much more intense than Strawberry Fields on this side. This, you can't see through at all. It is very pigmented. It does have a little bit of fallout. I got some over here when I tried to wipe it away, but not bad at all. I wish that there was like kind of a lighter blue that I could blend this out with because that'd be cool, but I know that monochromatic looks are not always the thing. I wonder if I were to take this same orangey shade and put it on this side. I think I'm gonna try it. So I'm going in again, Singe Beauty E03, and I'm going in with Bang again. Let's try. Those colors contrast nicely and actually it's blending out pretty well right there considering, you know, the uh, difference in color. I did lose a little intensity on pseudo, so going back in and packing that on. 
I actually kind of like that mix and I don't know I don't know why the blend is like coming out kind of pretty all right for the lid I'm going in with galactic love this is like a purpley blue color in general it's just really really pretty and I think I want to do that all over the lid to really intensify that color so again I'm going in with some NYX glitter primer I'm a little nervous because this is another color that did not swatch great when I did it, but it looks nice on the brush, so maybe it just needed some glitter primer. Ooh, that does have a beautiful shimmer to it though. I'm really enjoying that, but I feel like we lost the intensity of pseudo. Hmm. All right, before I do some light blue on the inner corner, which I want to do. I'm again going to put some of the Saturn color, which is that orangey gold shimmer glitter right under the brow bone. I kind of like it. I'm taking a second pencil brush with a little, little glitter primer, popping that on the inner corner here, and I'm going to go right into Blue Heaven, which is such a pretty color. It's like Cinderella's dress blue. See, that's the... <laughs> That is so intense and I'll blend this out, but that's the intensity I wanted from that like light peachy pink shimmer. And instead I got like nothing, but wow, look at that. I want to bring this up a tiny bit. That is an intense, intense, intense color and I like it. Ooh, I love this blue. Wow, that's crazy. That's beautiful and intense. And I like it. Okay, so I am gonna hop off camera and I wanna do my foundation, the rest of my face, my eyebrows, um, and I will come back and we will finish off the eyes. All right, all of that is done. Also, I have to say, I just tried two new to me products. So this one is probably a very old product, but it's my first time using it. This is the ColourPop blush in Papaya. I wish I could capture exactly how pink this is, but I think it's just such a little, pretty color like it's just it's very springy it goes with both sides I don't know I'm really liking it so far and it blended out really nicely like and I don't use powder blush often I'm kind of impressed but the other thing that I used is the new Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme Lip Shaper this is a pencil that is a plumper and who it has that tingly feeling that lip plumpers do and if you don't like that tingly feeling you won't like it so far I love this. So far I love this. I feel like my lips look like plump. And to be honest, as I get older, because I have little fine lines around my mouth, it's a little bit harder sometimes to get a smooth line. And this, you know, brings all the blood to the surface so it plumps it up a little bit. I think it looks really, really nice. This color is post-op pink. Mm, okay, I really like it so far. Now again, it does tingle. So if you don't like that tingle, you will not like this. So for under the eye, I'm going to take pseudo again on a fluffier brush and I'm just going to run that under the blue side. Yeah, that really helps to kind of smoke, smoke it out a little bit and I'm taking it and just connecting it on this corner and I'm even being like a little messy with this on purpose over here because I feel like it gives it that kind of smoky grungy feel. I like that. And then on this side, I'm nervous about this. I'm going in with a very little bit of strawberry fields. I'm usually nervous about putting red under my eyes. It's usually not my thing, but let's give it a shot. Oh, and for this, I'm using the Singe E04. You know what? I think I'm going to keep this just to the outer corner because I'm okay with that. Yeah, that looks pretty. I even took that farther in than I thought I would. And then for the rest, I'm going to take Bang and just put that further towards the inner corner. That's a pretty blend. Okay, so what I'm going to do to finish off this look, I want to do some liquid liner on both eyes and mascara, and I'll be right back. All right, here is the finished two looks, if you will. I am really happy with how this turned out, and I'll be honest, like, as I was starting to go through this tutorial or whatever you want to call it, or testing out or first impressions, I was pretty nervous that I was going to be like, you know what, don't get this palette. Like, this palette sucks. Not so much sucks. Hmm, okay, hold on. I didn't think it would suck but at the same time, I was kind of nervous at how some of the shades were performing, whether it was in swatches or whether it was on my eyes. I was kind of nervous with how they were performing, but the more I kind of sat with this and worked with it a little bit, and I, when I say worked with it, I don't mean in the same sense that I mean with a difficult to work with palette like the Melt 420, which I've typically said is a great palette, but difficult to work with. 
What I mean is just that like you need to build it up a little bit. And maybe that's a great thing for a lot of people the more I think about it, that it's not instantly like so pigmented that it falls, you know, you get fallout on your face or that you can't play with it or that you can't move the colors around. You can build them up and none of them were patchy at all. They just, some of them weren't as opaque instantly as I thought they would be. But again, maybe that's not such a bad thing. So I really like the two looks I came up with. I can't decide which one I like more because I love the sparkle here. Oh, why am I covering that up? <laughs> I love that sparkle. I love it so much and I love this inner corner, but an orange eye is kind of like my jam, an orange eye with a big wing and that sparkly orange on top is probably one of my favorite colors that I've used in general in a very long time. So. I don't know, which one do you like best? Which one do you think is, you know, more, more me or which one would you wear? In regards to this palette, how do I feel? I think I can easily go on record and say, this is not my favorite melt palette of all time. That still goes to the Gemini. And as of right now, that's probably always gonna go to Gemini. But am I happy to have this in my collection? Hell yes. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with this. And I'm proud of myself a little bit that I mixed on this eye when I took the blue with the orange and everything like that, because I personally have a tendency, as we can see from this, to go, okay, this side is one look, this side is another look. You shouldn't mix the two or whatever it is, but I'm really, Glad that I mixed it and played around with it a little bit. I'm just really, really happy with both looks. And the more I look at it, like the colors are pigmented, there was zero fallout, zero fallout on either eye. And maybe that's because of what I used. Like I even didn't put on foundation at first because I was convinced there would be a lot of fallout and there was not. So overall, I'm really happy I own this. If you are a makeup collector in any way, and I do consider myself to be somewhat of a collector of Melt Cosmetics, I think that this is something good to have in your collection. I have a lot of fun playing with this and I do think that it is different enough from the Vita palette where having both in your collection, it's not like you're gonna have too many doubles or things like that. So I don't know, it's fun. I think that I would even like to do a pretty neutral look with like reefer and far out. I think that that's something I'll get a lot of use out of. I just wanted to test the bright colors, of course, for my first time, but yeah, let me know what you think. Is this something you're interested in? Is this something you're planning on buying? Tell me all the details because I'm very, very curious to hear your opinions on this palette specifically. But that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I hope you'll consider giving it a thumbs up. It's free for you and it really helps out my channel or subscribe if you haven't already. I do love putting out new reviews and talking about low buy content and all that good stuff. You all can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Those are all glitter fallout and as always and forever, you are super freaking rock stars. <laughs> and I love you so much with my whole heart and I'll see you in the next video, bye.